Our Father in heaven, the Almighty God, speak to my brethren, speak also to me, and speak to as many as will chance this message, this sermon, in the name of Jesus. And let the entrance of your word bring deliverance to our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first lesson came from Exodus chapter 34, 29 to 35. Exodus chapter 34, 29 to 35. And our second lesson also came from Matthew chapter 17, 1 to 14. Amen? Amen. If you bring the two verses together, all you are seeing that is similar to both of them is a time of shining. Amen? Amen. Jesus was glorified during his transfiguration. And if you go down to Exodus, you see that while Moses was coming down from the mountain, Bible said that his face shone so bright that the children of Israel were backing away from him. Amen? Amen. So, there is a common denominator of coming to the presence of God. Presence of God is a place where you stand before God and because of God's presence, it changes your countenance. I want to tell you, each time you come to God's presence and you have worshipped God in spirit and in truth, while you walk out of this gate, something has happened to your countenance. This is true. You may not see it. Some eyes can be opened to see it. And Bible said, as, as Moses walked down the mountain with the two tablets, you know, the first time the Ten Commandments was received, Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights in the mount. And when the children of Israel waited and waited for him, they decided to help themselves. They molded a calf that would represent Moses to lead them. And so as a consequence, Moses has to go a second time because he broke that out of anger. He broke those two tablets out of anger. They are a righteous anger. They are a wrathful anger. The anger that comes because you are seeing sin and you hate it is a righteous anger. So when Moses broke those two tablets out of anger, it was a righteous anger. God never said anything about that. And what did he do? He took the calf, grinded it, mixed it with water, and made sure all of them drank it. And so this time, he had to go to the mountain a second time to do what? To get another command, commandment, a written commandment. And God told him, prepare two tablets and come up to the mountain. Unfortunately, the first tablet was given to by God. This time, he had to prepare another tablet and go to the mountain with him. And so he was again in God's presence, as you and I are in God's presence today. And the presence and the light of God rubbed off him. And as he was coming down with the two tablets, the elders of Israel saw him and would not recognize him. And perhaps think that it was a spirit coming. And they were almost running when Moses called on them. Come! It's me, Moses. And because Moses called on them, the fear in them left. And Moses was with them and spoke to them. And when the elders, Aaron and others, heard from him, after that, the congregation of Israel came because all of them were afraid. Who knows why God decided to do something that will separate 
Moses from the children of Israel. Once in a while, something different, God likes to do something different to show his presence. In 1987, I gave my life to Jesus in 86. In 1987, I was already an evangelist, preaching from one bus to the other. Tell me who is that, I tell you about Jesus. And so I was living a life of fasting and prayer. Reason? Because people will come to me and call me that there's a deliverance I should help them to do. And so I decided to always be prepared in the spirit. So I was living a life of fasting and prayer, six to six every day. I would pray. And so one day, as I was praying in my room, after praying, I emerged from my room, and behold, my mother was sitting in the living room. The first thing my mother said, Chukuka, how come you rub some powder in your face? I didn't understand what that meant, because I did not rub any powder. I believe that what my mother was seeing was a face that shone, because I was coming from God's presence. Here is God's presence. Anytime we come here, worshiping God in spirit and in truth, God will rub off his presence in us. Amen? Amen. And Bible says that Moses, each time he goes to the presence of God, he would remove the what? The veil. The veil. And when he speaks to the people, he will also remove the veil. But after speaking to the people, he put the veil back. Why? Because if his face was still shining and the people were afraid. There is power in the word of God. Amen? Amen. And God can show signs to confirm that he is the source from which a world is coming. I believe that God allow the face of Abraham, uh, Moses to shine at that time because he wanted to leave a message with the children of Israel. He wanted to leave a message with the children of Israel. And so again from there we saw Jesus chosen in the New Testament to go to the mount with four of them. And while they were at the mount, behold, there was Moses and Elijah. And there, the Bible said, Jesus was transfigured and shined like sun. You know, when you approach the presence of God, it's brighter than sun, yet it is not consuming. Amen? Our Lord Jesus was transfigured and shone like sun. And seeing this, Peter and other two other apostles could not withhold it. And Peter started speaking what he doesn't understand. Lord, if it is possible, let us build three tabernacles here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Hardly had he finished speaking that, God spoke to correct him. Amen? God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When they had that voice, they all were slain. They fell on the floor, on the ground. They were slain in the spirit. The mountain is a place of revelation. Every Sunday when you come to church, you are going to the mountain. And as you are in the mountain, be quiet and allow your hearts to be focused on the Lord so that you receive a revelation. Revelation are meant for just the children, not for any other person. Many people may come to the mountain and go back without receiving from God. If I were you on Sundays, I'll take a fast because I want to receive. Church is a special place. It's a place where you receive from God. As you sing, as you sing the hymns and worship and praise, 
allow your heart to be transported into the third heavens where you can receive. Do not be here when we are singing, when the crosses are going on, when the piano and the melodies are trying to transform us. Let us go up to the mountain with Jesus where we can see the heavenly things. The apostles saw the heavenly things. They saw Elijah. They saw Moses. Yes, if you look at what happened, Peter, James, and John were able to stand the glory of God, which was seen in Christ. Bible says somewhere in 2 Corinthians, Chapter 3, verse 18. Let's go there. He says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What does that mean? What does that mean? But we all, with an unveiled face, our faces are not veiled anymore, like Moses. In Christ, the veil is removed. Amen? In Christ, the veil is removed. And that is why Paul was saying, but we all, with unveiled face, behold as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. And when we behold the glory of the Lord, each time we come to church, look at what happens. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory and just by the Spirit of the Lord. You and I, each time we come to God's presence, are being transformed. We are gradually wearing the real suit we're supposed to wear as Christians. The suit that doesn't know sin. The suit that is full of joy. The suit that is full of joy and love for one another. The, food, the, the suit that easily praises God, moves in the spirit. Bible says we are being transformed. The same transformation was what Peter and the apostles were, and they were able to behold Jesus transfigured. Bible says, if we see God, we will consume. No man can stand before God. But when we are transformed, get this, go with this today. When you are transformed, when you rub off the glory of God, you'll be able to see God. You'll be able to stand the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is our goal because heaven is our hope. Moses was able to go to the mount and see God and receive the commandment. As we come to God's church, as we come to God's presence, I pray that every veil will be removed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that we can receive our healing. Amen. So that we can receive from God. So that we have, we have the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, every day when I come here for vigil on Fridays, I pray to God and say, God, I want to know you more. Reveal your word to me. Look into me and show me things in me that you don't like. That was why I sent us to that prayer we pray during ministry. Reveal in me, O oh Lord, the things in me that are hidden, which I'm cherishing and protecting. That could be pride. That could be disobedience. I said, Lord, reveal them to me. That could be inability to pray. Wake up in the morning and take some time and pray. And tell God, I love you. And I kiss towards heaven for you, Lord. You are precious in my sight. You are the Lord of my life. Without you, I'll be going to hell. I thank God for today. I thank God for today, which God is promising to remove any, any veil that is hindering us. Bible says that our veil is supposed to be removed according to what we read 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8, 18. With unveiled face, we behold God as in a mirror. Glory of the Lord. And being transformed, but I pray for the transformation of your children. Amen. That they will open their mouths to sing and burst into tongues. Amen. You may ask me, Reverend, at times you speak in tongues. What does it mean? One day I'm going to teach on it. Tongue is a heavenly language. And angels don't understand it. The demons don't understand it. Only God understands it. You that is speaking don't even understand it. You use it to create an opening for your prayer to move expressly. Hallelujah. Amen. One day we'll sit down and teach on it, or maybe in a Bible study. Amen? Amen. Oh Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your word. Teach us, O oh Lord, to come to your presence prepared and every veil in our hearts removed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.